I love those entries from cities that aren't necessarily hotbeds because there's a there's a point to prove. Right. There's a chip on their shoulder. Like I want people to recognize my city. There's talent coming from my city. So, you know, we look at where they're from after we watch the video. So talent, you know, it, it, it can come from anywhere. From NCPR, welcome to Northwards. People, ideas, and conversations from and about northern New York, Vermont, and beyond. I'm Mitch Tyke. Support for the Northwards podcast comes from the J.C. Steiniger and M.E. McDonald Charitable Fund at Adirondack Foundation in support of the Adirondack Foundation, building stronger Adirondack communities. I got to take a trip to the mothership last fall, NPR headquarters in Washington. It was for some business meetings, a chance to experience flight delays for the first time since the pandemic, walking around and talking to people with more expensive clothes than mine. You know, the usual business travel experience. But while I was there, I got to have a really cool experience, watching a tiny desk concert in action. The Colombian superstar Maluma was performing, which was also really cool, but the best part of the experience was seeing how NPR's tiny desk crew crams a working band and, a, in this case, a really big audience into a working office space and makes the concert into something that really works, whether you're watching it on your phone or your computer or your TV. Musicians have been performing around a desk at NPR since 2008. And since 2014, the network has invited aspiring performers around the country, people without a record contract, to compete for a chance to play their own Tiny Desk concert at NPR. The 2024 edition of the Tiny Desk Contest is at hand. It's underway. Bobby Carter is the series producer. He is also one of the judges. And best of all, he's on the line with us. Thanks for taking a few minutes to talk. Nice to talk to you, Mitch. So Tiny Desk has been a big part of what you do for a long while now. What makes mm -hmm. you love it so much? Oh, I am obsessed with music uh, since uh, I can remember. I am. Music is the thing that uh, energizes me. Um, it's the thing I'm still most excited about uh, in my everyday life. Uh, I don't do anything um, without music. I love it so much. It's it's still it's still so exciting um, to this day. So no, I and 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 to have the opportunity every day for a living to walk into uh, the building of NPR headquarters and put on these tiny desk concerts. It's the thrill of a lifetime. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you have been involved in music in a whole different bunch of uh, scenarios. Yes. Can you put into words what makes this this kind of unique? I mean, it's not unique anymore because there have been lots of imitators out there. <laughs> um, but can you put into words what makes Tiny Desks so magical? Yeah. Uh, it's the intimacy. I think um, we as, – as a, as a fan – I like to see the artist uh, that I love and the artist that I'm discovering. I want to see them in a different light. I want to see them vulnerable. Um, I want to see and hear them in ways that I don't normally hear when I'm listening to a, an actual recording or when I see them on stage. And Tiny Desk, to me, uh, in my biased opinion, is the best presentation of that. We take away uh, what the artist is used to and we actually challenge the artist. Um, we take away monitors and all the bells and whistles that that perfect the performance. And we and, and our presentation helps to make them human um, in, in, in the fans eyes. So I think um, just to see them in this light and, and, and for me in my unique position to see the behind the scenes and how they actually work this thing out and watching them in sound check and rehearsal. It's, it's a dream come true. You, you are, believe it or not, giving me goosebumps as you talk about it. <laughs> well, so so let's talk about the the Tiny Desk contest. What do the best entries, regardless of the genre, have in common? Uh, the best entries, um, the best entries and our winners, um, when you watch them, they're going to evoke emotion. Um, when you look at uh, last year's winner, um, Little Moon from Utah, once those, once that that hook kicks in and once the song really kicks in um it it gives you goosebumps like you said earlier to the sky wonder i wonder i is it a tale that we make true in the telling ooh, ooh.
Lisa Amador from the previous year. I cried when I first watched that show. Linda Diaz or Tank and the Bangers or the emotion of a Quinn Christopherson from Alaska, like, like just giving his heart and soul to that song. Um, the best, the best contestants, they, they give it their all and they, they, it, it's going to evoke some sort of emotion, whether it's laughing or crying. I mean, Tank and the Bangers made us laugh and cry within a matter of minutes. So it's the emotion and the feeling. You, you mentioned last year's winner from Utah, which is not really the the what we think of as the hotbed of of live music. Right. I am talking to you from a pretty rural part of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think there is something that the Tiny Desk Contest offers to bands and musicians who who aren't in New York or L.A. or mm-hmm. D.C. or some other place where there are seemingly tons of clubs to play? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, when you look at who we've highlighted in in the winners and who we highlight um, on uh, the Top Shelf series where we talk about some of our favorite contestants, they're from all over. Um, We've had winners from Arlington, Virginia. We've had winners from Anchorage, Alaska, you name it. But I also think I love that there is, I love those, 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 uh, the entries from, from cities that aren't necessarily hotbeds because there's a, there's a point to prove, right? There's a chip on their shoulder. Like I want people to recognize my city. There's talent coming from my city. So I love that. Um, I operate. I've always operated that way. It's something to prove. Um, and there's 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 plenty of opportunity because, you know, each day we see with the contestants in this contest, artists coming from all over um, cities that we've never heard of. You know what I mean? So, no, it's, it's the it's the best opportunity because we don't we look at that afterwards. You know, we look at where they're from after we watch the video. So talent, you know, it, it, it can come from anywhere. Well, so speaking of watching the video, I mean, this is this is some serious winnowing down you and the other judges have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not asking you to share company secrets here, but but what's the vibe of the judging process like? I mean, you've got a, uh, you know, do you have like seven pizzas in front of you uh, <laughs> when it all starts? Well, we always, you know, we we each year um, when we when we talk to the judges and when we talk to um, our team, the team of uh, people who reviewed the videos and go through the various stages um, of the submissions, um, we always remind people, and I remind myself, be sure to watch these videos with plenty of energy. Don't start watching videos at the end of your day. Um, these contestants deserve our full attention. So there are multiple rounds, um, and when we finally narrow it down to um, that handful where, where that, that are really considered um for winning this thing, we hop in, we go into a room and we, and, and we uh, for lack of a better word, we 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 duke it out um, to find out who who was at the top. This year, um, we have a fan favorite. You know, we we comb our we comb YouTube and our social media pages, and we listen to we listen to the audience. Um, so this year, there's going to be an opportunity for um, our viewers to pick who they love. So. Uh, this thing gets narrowed down, but and there's a lot of passion in that room. But uh, I'm very, very proud of of what we've done so far, and I think this year I got a feeling, man. I got a feeling, Mitch. This could be a very special year. <laughs> well, and you would hope that the judges and the audience both kind of love the same thing, right? Yeah, but also there are when I think about past contestants and past winners. Um, I can think of any number of of artists who didn't necessarily win. They could have made it, which is why we um, we invite sometimes every once in a while. We will invite a contestant who didn't win the kind the contest to come and play the tiny desk anyway, because people have made real impressions. So there are lots of opportunities. We you know, I would love it if, you know, we pick a winner and, you know, the audience maybe picks the runner up in our eyes, it could happen. So how big a deal is production value when it comes to the recordings that musicians submit? Um, from a personal standpoint, the look of the video doesn't matter that much to me. I guess, you know, it's it's cute if they want to do something or, you know, add some special production value to it. I mean, that's great. But for me, what I, I'm listening for a high quality audio so we can hear everything. I think, um, If you are doing this and you're performing with a band or performing solo, I think you want to put the time and effort into making it sound as good as as good as it can sound. 
Uh, so for me, the the sound and the audio is the most important thing. You can film this thing on your on your phone if you want to, but just make sure we we hear everything you're doing. Obviously, it's a huge deal for the person or the group that wins the contest or gets uh, spotlighted in some way. But what do you mm-hmm. think is good for these musicians just about going through the process of entering this contest? You know, as with a lot of things in life, I think you it's it's good to get out of your comfort zone and try new things at this if you're uh if you're pondering this um and and you have a little bit of fear, a little bit of nervousness about entering the contest, um do what you have to do to shake that off and, and, and enter because you have a it's a sense of of accomplishment. Um also with the contest you're joining a massive community. Uh and we, you know, we travel, we travel the country once we crown a winner. Um, and we would pick other submissions from uh who didn't necessarily win to maybe open up uh for the winner. So you're joining you're joining a community. Um, you also have an opportunity for uh our wonderful panel of judges to view your stuff. Um, so the more eyes you have on your on your music, the 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 bigger opportunity of or the more opportunity you have to be discovered. So there are endless opportunities here, whether you win or not. Um, and if and if it's just, hey, I put my video out there and I have more courage to do it next year and I'm encouraged to do it uh, the following year, continue to make music, that's a win. So uh, we just have a couple seconds left before we wrap up. Give us the nuts and bolts. What should people know about the contest, like how to enter, who's eligible, yeah. and the deadline? Yeah, absolutely. 18 years or older, um, you're in, you have to be a, a resident of the United States. Uh, Virgin Islands or Puerto Rico, I believe you have until February 21st, 2024. Um, For more details, npr.org slash tiny desk contest. Bobby Carter, uh, Tiny Desk adds so much to the musical landscape. Uh, I thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us about Tiny Desk and the Tiny Desk contest. Yes, it's an honor, Mitch. You take care. Bobby Carter is one of the judges for NPR's Tiny Desk Contest and also the series producer for NPR's Tiny Desk Concerts, of which there are many, many, many. You should check them out. They're online. You can find a link from ncpr.org slash northwards. Ethan Shanty's band has not performed a Tiny Desk Concert, but they are welcome to do one around the desk of any of the people he is about to mention in the closing credits. Well, thank you very much, Mitch. Northwards is an NCPR podcast production. The show is written, edited, and produced by station manager Mitch Tyke. I'm Ethan Shanty, and I handle digital production. Doyle Dean is our production manager. Bill Hanel is our digital guy. And Caitlin Kelly handles our social media. Our theme music is by Wickmore Jazz Trio of Plattsburgh. The excerpt of Little Moon's Tiny Desk concert was provided courtesy of NPR. This is NCPR North Country Public Radio.